everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby. With me is Johnny Han, the visual effects supervisor for HBO's The Nevers. And Johnny, this show, uh, you know, it's about these people who have turns, these sort of superpowers. And one of the most unique ones that you get to, to find a way to visualize is I think with Mary's, uh, who has a song that sort of um, links herself and empathically links herself to all these uh, people with who have been touched as the show mm -hmm. says. And I'm curious, it's such a unique, a lot of the powers are unique, but that one in particular, how did you sort of think about and find a way to visualize that power? Right, well, that's a great question. One of the nice things about it was that she, it was already represented by her voice, right? And that's something that the audience could hear. And, and the way we, are, we were doing it was um, as much as, everyone in the sh in the show could hear it um we weren't actually saying the other characters could see this light it was really for the audience to be able to see it for the viewers um like a like we opened a little window for the viewers at home to kind of see um something that not even the other characters could see although they could hear it and so um uh we wanted to make it something that uh you could believe was we, we had this idea that everyone was actually all interconnected. You know, there's lots of ideas how um, there's almost uh, this web of energy between all different things and all living things. And all we were doing with Mary's Light was revealing those connections between people, almost like um, almost like a laser through through fog, right? Like a laser beam you don't actually see until there's something for a medium for it to be revealed. So um, we we looked at it that way, that there were these already these connections through all living things, but we are simply highlighting the, the ones between Mary and the other touched uh, touched uh, people. Um, and we had this idea that her coming out of her would be almost, it would almost be like a handshake. It, it would be seeking out others and very much almost in these tendrils that were almost like fingers reaching out. And then if you look closely, you'll notice on the on the on the recipients, it was almost as if to to wake awaken their energy and their their um, uh, their essence, and for that to almost reach out to meet Mary's handshake and and literally to do this. Mm. Um, so if you look closely, you can actually see the threads kind of combining. We we talked about it being like a two way highway or two-way motorway where energy was passing both ways. Cause it wasn't just Mary, you know, going out and touching everyone. It was about the touched answering the call. Yeah. And so as much as Mary's light hit them, their light would answer back. Yeah. Uh, what really struck me about the show is that all of these powers, um, even something as otherworldly as Mary's seems to have like a, a very kind of naturalistic vibe to them or look to them um, versus like a, a big uh, like superhero movie or something where everything is glowing and flashing. So was there an overall uh, approach to showcasing those powers? Yes. And this was from the very beginning of the development of the show, like months before, you know, we wanted to figure out what is the look of the show going to be? And not just the visual effects, but the actual show, the, 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 what, what's the texture of it? And um, you know, we're visual effects one department out of many. And as we were getting, you know, costumes made and sets made and things designed, you know, kind of informed, well, the visual effects have to support that, right? We can't stick out, I guess, you know, we can't be the odd one out. Um, we're not there to stand out, you know, we're there to, to support the show. And so one, one thing I kept saying to everyone was the effects need, the effects should feel amazing for the other 19th century people in the world. Like what does a Londoner in 1896, what does that person see as amazing and spectacular, right? We're so used to seeing, you know, everything you've ever imagined, right? In every big superhero film. And yes, everything's, it's always like bigger, 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 more, 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 you know, glowier and more, more particles and more energy. And that's impressive to us because we're so acclimated and you know we live in this 
age of the internet and we've all seen amazing things, but we're thinking, well, what, what's enough to impress someone in 1896? It actually doesn't take much. So there's, 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 we're trying to honor this subtlety that, um, you know, we don't want to make something that's so spectacular that they would um, freak out and, you know, it, it would have to be magical and wondrous to someone of that period. So our effects would have to feel period, if that makes sense. Um, so we, we did a lot, and a lot of it was tempering it down, was, was you know, what is the, the, the minimum amount, which is not the easiest, uh, like minimum doesn't mean it's the easier route. It's actually quite tricky because we're dealing with, you know, we, we, we went through so many rounds of, of iterations of things where we were just like, oh, just make it 2% less bright, 5% less bright, you know, and, um, because it all had to be about the characters and, 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 um, and if, you know, it's the storytelling is all from their faces and their reactions, and we're just there to connect the dots and we're not there to, to steal the show. So it's all about subtlety from the beginning was, was a big creed of the visual effects of the show. Yeah, and I have to make sure I ask you about uh, one of my favorite moments of, of this whole season, I think, is this battle between Amalia and Odium on the lake in uh, the episode Ignition. It's one of the most unique fight scenes I think I've I've ever seen in in anything um, as he's trapping her because he walks on water. He can't go beneath the water and is trapped her underneath. Uh, what went into sort of like capturing those water effects? It's a very specific effect. I don't know that I've seen before. Yes. Um, you know, from the very beginning, we knew we had the scene as going to be this battle Molly underwater, someone above water. And, um, you know, the whole idea of walking on water has been around forever. And in Superman 2, the Richard Donner film, General Zod lands on the lake in Houston, Houston. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I remember as a kid seeing that, I was like, oh, it's so cool. If you watch it now, though, I mean, I mean, it was great, but very clearly there's a platform hidden underwater. And that's sort of the classic way to do it. But, you know, we, water isn't, um, we didn't want it to feel like this hard surface. We thought, hey, you know, we want to preserve this characteristic of water. And everyone knows water doesn't have a single shape. It changes and it moves. And, and so um, we really want to treat it like Odium, the, the, the big baddie there, he's affecting the water around him. And so, uh, like altering its characteristic, but not like flat out changing it to like a platform. And so we um, we had a lot of fun with that. I, I, I said, let's get some memory foam mattresses in here. Let's get some trampolines uh, and every kind of squishy surface you can think of. Cause we thought, all right, what are different way, different surfaces that, that kind of, they're just not what you're used to. And so uh, we had a trampoline park and we jumped around there for, for a day to just get a sense of like, what are some cool ways that we can make um, the water uh, react in a way we've never seen before. Um, and we shot in this amazing tank uh, at Pinewood Studios, super, super famous place to shoot. And um, we had, you know, uh, cameras that could, you know, were, were so well weight balanced that they could just go straight underwater and straight above water without any any hitch to it and that was a big part of it was trying to make it feel like uh, the story of that scene had to be just as free underwater as it was above you know it had to feel like um we weren't cheaping out you know when we went underwater um uh and you know what what i like about the sequence is um it's so it's so cool and so fun to watch. And I don't think it's because of the spectacle of, again, about like, oh, it's the biggest, you know, most amount of characters on screen or, or like, we've never seen a vista like that. Or, you know, it wasn't about numbers and it was about like trying to come up with something that we truly felt was clever, you know, that it was, it was a cl visually clever scene um, that, uh, and it, it, it was cool because of the concept. Um, and again, that all goes back to the subtlety thing. It wasn't about, um, you know, what were the 
it wasn't about like waves or anything about, we had these crazy ideas in when we were previsiting it of like, what are some other things he could do? And, um, uh, one was that he would like slam the ground and create this big funnel and Amalia would be sucked into it and, you know, all these other big ideas. And, um, you know, at the end of it was, you know, let's temper it down. It's, it's about this showdown between our, 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 our hero and this baddie and, um, and all the footage of her is, is really, um, is really um, Laura, Laura Donnelly. She did an amazing job. And um, honestly, that just made uh, the effects work that much um, more believable because we had a real person in the water struggling. Um, I mean, you know, pretending to struggle. And uh, so, yeah, we shot a, a tank, all green screen, um, but no CG camera moves, no CG characters, because we really felt, hey, those are the things that the moment camera turns CG, you've, you've, you've kind of, I don't want to say cheated, but you've kind of robbed the audience of like, of uh, this very free flowing scene where it, it, it was live action and it was real and we want to keep it feeling real all the way through there. Uh, we didn't use digital doubles. Um, we did a few kind of face, um, uh, we had a few stunt shots um, uh, and all of it started with the stunt choreography, which was amazing too. Um, so anyway, sorry to, to go back to it. Um, it was pretty much pulling out every trick in the book, um, kind of referencing old films, seeing what's been done um, and always bringing it back to the characters and the real peril and what the, what the scene was about, which was um, putting Amalia in grave danger, uh, preventing her from getting to, to marry. Yeah. I spoke to Laura. She said she had a lot of a lot of fun with that one. Um, yes. And you know, filming in a studio like that is it difficult then? Because I assume that it all has to be composited with the environment. Is it more difficult to do that when the effects are based, you know, in water and something naturally occurring? Is that a, a harder yeah, thing to it, do? It's an interesting one because you know we, um, if you have this water surface and you have green screen all around you just reflect green, right? And you just have this solid reflection of green. And it's like, what do we put in the green? So um, we ended up uh, rebuilding this whole lake environment. It's based on a real location we were going to film at. And in fact, the scene is bookended with footage from the real location, but it was way too dangerous and cold to shoot in the lake. Um, so it's based on a real location and um, the water surface because of this kind of um, uh, this soft um, kind of trampoline like quality to it, uh, we ended up re-simulating the water um, to, you know, to work with um, the behavior of the character. So we ended up replacing uh, everything kind of beyond the character. The characters were splashing around and all those water splashes are real and we keep that and then everything beyond that, we replaced pretty much the whole surface of the lake and the environment beyond. Um, and very challenging because uh, water has always been one of those very, very difficult things in, in CG and visual effects that you usually try to stay away from. And um, uh, well, we just, you know, we, we, we didn't, want to change it, right? We, you know, we could have said, oh guys, make the scene take place. And, but you couldn't because the whole point was the character, about a character who could walk on water. So there was no escaping it. And we just went for it. And um, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully all that, that, that blood and sweat um, pays off. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, you know, one thing that is also, you interesting about this show too, is that there seems to be a massive amount of practical sets and, and practical elements in, in there. And what is the process of, how do you decide what needs to be CGI versus what needs to be a practical element? Um, well, what's, what's, um, what's great about it is so collaborative, right? We, every, every, everything starts with a meeting and you've got, um, our, our special effects 
uh, supervisor. Um, we've got our, our stunt coordinators and uh, it's like, all right, who wants to do what, right? And in a good meeting, it's about everyone raising their hand and saying, oh, well, we can do it this way. We can do this way. And you know, then you have too many solutions and it's just about picking one. <laughs> the worst is when like nobody raises their hand and it's like, okay, nobody, nobody wants to take that, that one. Um, but it usually comes some kind of combo, you know? And, uh, you know, for that shoot, I remember that meeting actually with exactly those people I mentioned. And it was like, well, we can build some platforms. And then we thought, well, we don't want it to feel like they're on platforms, but we could at least get the actors to, um, uh, we could put them on platforms, but then we could replace the water with CG. So at least the people are real, but the water could be CG. And then, okay, so that's a middle ground. And then um, some of this, uh, and then the stunts. It was like, well, then how does, um, how does Amalia actually, um, you know, pull the guy down? And then we say, okay, well, um, the chain can be real, but the hook can't because the hook was too, um, maybe it was too dangerous or maybe it couldn't, sink or something and and then that's when we say all right well let's do the hook in cg but the chain be real so that way you know you keep the audience you don't ever want the audience to um uh you always want to mix it up so they they can't quite pick it apart and say oh that whole chain is cg um and uh yeah and every and i think the bigger thing to stress is that there's no one solution every shot we have those meetings sometimes about every shot where it's different from shot to shot where it's like, okay, this one, the water be real, but the, um, or the next shot, it'll be CG. And it all depends honestly on the formula, the recipe for that shot. You know, it could be as subtle as like, well, the camera is that much um, higher, which may mean, oh, all of a sudden now we see a lot more of that water surface. So in that case, the water becomes CG. So the camera is just two feet lower, you're seeing much less of that water, then oh, we could get away with keeping it real. Um, so it's, um, uh, it's quite a collaboration and there's no, um, no, and, and, and it, it always ends up looking the most real when you're mixing it all up. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah. Cool. Well, before I let you go, um, you know, this, you've worked on some really big CGI heavy projects like Pacific Rim in 2012, where, where the effects are such a centerpiece. When you mm -hmm. think of something like the Nevers, which is, you know, as you said, the, you have to sort of dial it back to fit in the period. What's sort of the biggest um, lesson you learned working on this style of effects? Um, what I've learned from this show, uh, from the Nevers, um, I think I learned to appreciate um, uh, the, 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 the beauty of, of under, understated um, subtlety um, and also learn to respect that um, it is, it is not an, it's not easier just because it's, it's more subtle. Um, uh, those films that you mentioned, 2012 um, and Pacific Rim, were both big water films, right? Um, big water films. I mean, those were huge for the time, 2012. Um, and you know, we we were God, we were on that film, and we had no, we didn't know how we were going to do it. We just said, oh, we'll, we'll do it, and we just figured it out. And usually, the techniques were always hiding it in bigger and more chaos, right? Splash more into the camera, make the waves so fast or so big or so enormous that you're kind of distracting the audience by the spectacle of it, right? By simply the like, wow, that is so big. That wave is so big. I don't actually have a reference in my head for ever seeing something that, that a wave that big so I can't really judge whether it's fake or not because I, I don't have a point of reference. The Nevers, because it's, um, it's period, period is sort of all about 
referencing what we are familiar with, right? Period is all about kind of um, exploiting a bit of that nostalgia of um, what we've all kind of drilled into our heads from history books and from films and from art history. And uh, so you're kind of, it's sort of the opposite where you are challenged with trying to um, evoke the familiar and evoke what is uh, um, what one perceives as, as tangible. Um, and you can't hide it in a big glowy thing or with a robot or with um, more and more and more and more effects, right? It's, it's, it's about, um, again, it's all about like what is from the point of view of a person in 1896, you know, how do they see the world? And um, so the challenge was the, um, you know, it's like, it's like wine tasting, right? Like, um, you know, you get better at it eventually, but you know, at first, or like sushi, right? I remember when I was young uh, in university, first trying sushi, I was in New York, I grew up in New York and uh, cause it plays at half price sushi and uh, I was like, oh, that's good, you know? And then you get older and you realize, wow, there's very, very, very fine, subtle things to pick up on. Um, wine is probably a good example. And um, I'm still never very good at picking wines. I'm that guy at the dinner table, never, oops, I say no, someone else uh, try it uh, because, um, you know, I recognize, oh, I don't think I know the subtle differences. And so um, such is the same with visual effects and the nevers. And it's just sort of learning the fine, fine subtleties of what makes something feel real, tangible, and like it could have existed in history. Because ultimately our show, because it's period, it depends on the believability that someone believes that something obviously fictitious actually occurred uh, in the past, so. Well, uh, I think it's a very successful job there. Thank you so much for sitting down with me, everyone who's out there watching. Subscribe to Gold Derby and keep it here to stay up to date throughout Emmy season. Johnny, thank you so much again. Thank you.